Okay, so I thought I'd just do a, a bit of a smallish video around the search for the next watch and talk about the kind of things that are going through my head. So, um, for a 40th watch uh, or for an anniversary watch or a special watch, for me it needs to be a watch that will stand the test of time. Um, the Amiga Aquaterra that I bought, which I'll, I'll show in a bit, um, it's 10 years old almost and it still looks like it could be released today and look fantastic and it will look good in 10, 20 years time, 30 years time. So for my 40th watch it needs to be something that will stand the test of time aesthetically, uh, at least in my eyes anyway. Um, so not something that's of the era or, or of that decade or even that year depending on what you're looking at. Um, I've also got a good idea now around my kind of Goldilocks dimensions, so around 42 millimetres in diameter no more than 21 millimetres between the lugs, um, ideally 20 millimetres, no more than 13 millimetres uh, thick and no more than 50 millimetres lug to lug. Um, ideally on a bracelet, I just like bracelets, I always end up coming back to bracelets um, on the higher end watches um, and something different um, from my current collection. So I don't know why I started on that page, but we'll get there in a second. So this is my current collection of uh, nicer watches. Obviously, we've got a blue dial pilot. Um, I've now got my um, silver stroke white dial. It is a silver dial Seiko diver and uh, my Amiga. So something also that fits into um, what is a, a small collection, right? It's, it, it's a small collection. Um, some of the things I don't particularly like, polished center links. Um, I prefer brushed sides to a case as well, having had polished sides to cases on uh, some of my other watches. Um, obviously, I've, I've owned and churned a reasonable amount of watches recently, including a couple of Tudor Backplay 58s, a Tudor Pelagos, a Tudor GMT, uh, a Longines Conquest, um, and a Zealous Horizons. I'll do another video around what I've learned there. Uh, but the main thing is just the dimensions. Uh, not everything. When you try a watch on, things can change. Um, but yeah, so ideally as well, having owned this little beauty over here, the micro adjustment on it is just exceptional. So ideally something with micro adjustment. So one of the first watches I looked at was the Speedmaster. Um, I tried it on a couple of times. This is the new one. I was always put off by the old one. Um, it felt a little bit big. It wore a little bit big. I wasn't a big fan of the end links. Um, the inaccuracy of the movement was the thing that bugged me the most, so it was just never really a go for me, even though I liked the look of the watch. So with the release of this watch, um, it really did catch my eye. The movement looks fantastic. When you see it in person, it wears uh, very well indeed. The taper on the bracelet, I think it's down to 16 millimeters at the clasp is ridiculous. And also you can buy the chronoscope um, clasp, which has a toolless micro adjust on it. I think it's only one adjustment. I think it's about four or five millimeters, so not ideal. Um, but it's it has toolless adjustment on it. It's got brushed case back. It's got a see-through, um, well, um, display case back. Um, it's got some polished elements to it. I prefer this one to the Hesolite one um, because I do like seeing the movements and also I like the polished elements on it which means you could just wear it. It's more versatile. Uh, the logo is applied and polished. You've got polished elements here. Um, it just makes it a more versatile watch for me. Um, also I forgot to mention my budget started at around five to six thousand and yeah it's crept up since then. So I tried this on two or three times and it never blew me away but it was up until recently, and I'll explain why in a minute, the watch I was, I was planning to buy. At the same time I tried that one on, I also tried on this. I really thought this was going to be a no-brainer for me. At the time, I didn't have a white dial watch. Um, I like dive watch styles. Um, I'm not a big fan of the bracelet and the helium escape valve and lots of other things, actually, to be fair. But as a package, I quite like it. Um, I tried it on and... I know people are going to hate you saying this, but it felt cheap. Um, the bezel action was tinny. The bezel was actually a little bit loose. Um, you couldn't hold the bezel properly when you were moving it. And it was actually a worse bezel action than my um, Seiko, than my three Tudors that I've had, 258s and my GMT. And that just cheapened the whole watch for me and immediately ruined it. Um, which I was really disappointed by because I thought this could be a really good option. And there are some fantastic rubber strap options from Amiga for this watch as well. So easily within my budget, and especially if you um, consider discounts that you'll get from ADs and all these watches. Uh, but unfortunately, it just didn't do it for me when I put it on. 
Um, another watch I was looking at uh, was a Glossuta Original uh, Panamatic Luna. This is actually a silver dial, not a white dial, but it is a stonker. It's brilliant. It's got loom in the hands um, of the watch. Uh, so it's more sporty than it, it looks like, but it does have polished center links. It also has an identical clasp to my IWC. It's completely different from anything else I've owned. I love the moon phase. Um, I love the big dates. Um, but I think it's just a bit too dressy. Um, will this stand the test of time in 10 years? I'm not sure. I think this is more of what I call like experimental watches in between watches. So watches that you're happy to buy and hopefully not lose money on, but buy and maybe wear for three or four years and then sell and to put towards other watches. Um, but I, it didn't strike me as an anniversary watch because I think it was just a little bit too different. Although I'd love to own one at some point, this and the Blue Dial variant are fantastic. It, I, I just couldn't quite get my head around the design of it for a watch that I want to be timeless. So a beautiful watch, and I will try one on. I'll be going into London in June, as I've mentioned a few times. I'll be trying a number of these watches on and taking wrist shots, and that may slightly change my view, but, but we'll see. And what you will notice with all these watches is a number of different brands, different styles, but all within the dimensions and rough budgets that I've been talking about. The GP L'Oreal, so I've been looking at this for a while, but I just don't think I like it. Um, There's quite a few variants. Um, it just feels like it's trying to be something else, right? It just feels like it's trying to be an AP. Uh, I know it's not, and I read into the history of it, but I just, and there's a waffle dial one, which I might not get to, but, and I like this one. There you go, the waffle dial ones. Again, I think they're more experimental watches for me. Um, I'm just not sure I would look back on that in 10 years time and, and think I absolutely love it or not. And as you can see from the price, it'll probably be a bit over my budget, but we'll, we'll come to that in a minute. Um, so I ruled these out, but I, I have been in, to and from the website a number of times. Um, from JLC, um, the Polaris was one of the ones I looked at. Until I realized it was pin and collar. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I swear I saw something that was a pin and collar bracelet, which I think is a bit of a shocker. Um, and again, I just wasn't 100% sold on the design. The bracelet style, I'm not sure about with the polished H links. Um, you can see the quality of that dial there, different finishing on it. Um, the browser is very slow. Sorry, I'm, I'm using a secure browser, so it's a bit slow. But the detail on that dial is fantastic. It's sporty, it's nice, it's different. I like the way you use the, the various crowns for the timing of the inside chapter ring. Um, hasn't got... It's got a decent clasp. It kind of pops open on each side to give micro adjustment. But I don't know, I just couldn't quite get my head around it. And there wasn't a colour combination that I particularly liked. I've already got a blue dial. So I didn't want another blue dial watch. And the one I actually really liked, uh, they only did... I don't know if it's going to come up now. My browser is ridiculously slow. Um, I don't know there it is, to be fair. Okay, so I do like the black and white one, but it's just not different enough for what I'm looking for, for my next watch, I don't think. Um, there's one with a date, but the date black and white one is like a faux loom. But again, I just don't think it's different enough. I also did look at the Reverso. The Reversos are fantastic, but I'm just not quite, <laughs> not quite mature enough to wear it, I don't think. Uh, I can see myself owning a Reverso at some point in the future, especially the dual time, where you flip it over and it's got a, date, um, a time on one side and, and on the other. So a bit of an outlier was this, uh, the Bulgari Octo. When I was in the States quite a few years back now, it must be about five years ago, I tried one of these on and was really surprised by how much I liked it. This might actually be the Finissimo looking at those pictures. Um, but as you can tell straight away, I mean, this is very much a watch that it would have to be an experimental watch. Um, it's really out there from a design perspective, but it's super comfortable, really well made. Um, obviously, it's got some obvious flaws, I think. It's quite hard to read at night time. There's no loom at all. I wouldn't go for this colour, probably. Uh, they've got other dial variants. I quite like one. They've got one on a rubber strap with a gold um, case, which kind of is, I guess, their version of the um, Rolex um, uh, Yachtmaster rose gold. Um, but they haven't got a rose gold one. Haven't they? Well, actually, I think they might have a rose gold and a yellow gold. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a cool watch. It was definitely a watch that will divide opinion. Um, horologically, I think they're fantastic. 
uh, with the Finissimo and the way they've designed it is, is unique. I, I can see myself owning one of these in the future, but just not for my special um, 40th birthday, I don't think. Um, one of the watches I was um, really interested in trying on when I went to London recently, blimey, this is taking a while, was this one. And it's the Zenith Chrono Master Original. Um, this is the 38mm variant. Um, I tried it on, it was just too small for me. Um, it does have polished sensor links, it doesn't have micro adjusting clasp, and it does have polished sides. But I just love the design so much uh, that I wanted to, you know, I wanted to try it on. And yeah, it was just too small. And the 41mm one, because I believe there is a 41mm variant. Um, oops, not going to find it. It just didn't. It just didn't do it for me in the end. Uh, and while I was there, uh, the current chap at Watch of Switzerland, um, after I tried that one on, went and bought out the black one of these, the Chrono Master Sport. Um, I have never wanted and don't want a Daytona. I would never get one anyway. Um, I'm not even sure it would fit my wrist in terms of the style I like, uh, with sizing and so on. I'm going to click into this one. So I don't have that issue. Um, I had a friend recently who was trying to get a Daytona. I didn't want to buy this because he saw it as a, a substitute um, that might scratch his Daytona itch. Sell it off. For me, that is not, you have to bear with me. I will get us to work in a minute. This browser is horrendous. Um, for me, that's not a problem. It's not something that I have to worry about. I've never looked at a Daytona and gone, oh, can't afford it. I'm never going to get one. I may as well just get the next best thing. Um, so that's not an issue for me. And I tried on the Black Dial variant. He had one in the case, bought it out. It has polished center links and it has a polished side case. But my word, was it beautiful. And I put it on and the weight was uh, fantastic. God, this browser is a pig. Um, the sub dials looked brilliant um while my seiko my seiko will probably go at some point right so and it's a silver dial not a white dial but and it's a dive watch it's completely different to this but these these are the kind of things that go on in, inside my head so when i looked at it uh i'll try and get an image of the back of it because it looks insane it's it's absolutely brilliant the pushes was it was so crisp and nice to use uh, the crown was nice to use the date just kind of disappears at its position i know that would be really controversial for some people i love a date on my watches i like automatic watches um for the obvious reasons uh, you don't have to keep winding them up um, i love the dial when you look at the dial it's so well executed you've got all these nice contrasting color sub dials it's just a beautiful watch. It's so well done. And you can wear that in for any occasion. You can wear that for a wedding. You can wear it to work. Um, you can put it on a different strap if you wanted to. I, I wouldn't. Um, it does have five micro adjusting points on the, oh, there you go, zoomed out, on the um, clasp. So it's not the tallest micro adjusting clasp, which is not ideal for me, but um, it's okay. It'll, it'll mean I'll get a perfect fit, I believe, because it's it offers enough adjustment um, on the clasp to get you a perfect fit. One of the problems you to have, look at that movement, is they only offer three micro adjusting slots at about, I think, three and a half millimetres or something, three millimetres between them. And it's almost impossible to get a perfect fit. Um, with this, with the five millimetres, oh, not five millimetres, five micro adjustments, I think a couple of millimetres between, um, it's stunning and there you go there's the black one that i tried on and the black dial gotta be honest with the gloss black dial really blew me away i wasn't expecting to like it anywhere near as much as i did um so at the moment the black one's leading the race uh but i will be going into london and i will be trying on uh the white one hopefully if i can find it somewhere and then that will make up my decision as to i think what my next watch will be i do have to try on all the other ones as well that i've just mentioned um you'll see the price there um, I think you can get it for considerably less than that. So my budget started at about five to six thousand and it just went up to eight. <laughs> just eight and a bit basically. Um in order to try and 
get me into that watch my wife when she was there and she saw my reaction to putting it on uh, she knew straight away so you can see you can get brand new ones already if i went into this um i think there was a brand new one at 8300 in the uk from a dealer um so it's already within my budget um and i wouldn't be buying it until probably about this time next year anyway uh, and zenith have already said they're going to be or well, they are reducing uh, the classic watch i think it's called um to up production on the movements of these watches uh, they're, they're, they're stopping the zenith defy classic um so they can concentrate on the movement for these watches because they're so popular um which means they'll be even cheaper to get in a year's time um where's the uk one that was reasonable sort of where is it it was about eight and a bit i think that's a used one I'm boring you all now but there you go 8300 so i'll be able to get it within my budget within my time frames um so yeah it's, it's interesting it's it just goes to show you as always you need to try the watches on i wasn't even looking for this watch i wasn't intending to try it on i wasn't intending to buy it um but my word am i glad the chat bought it out and i put it on my wrist because it just felt right it felt absolutely brilliant it looked spot on the movement looked amazing the weight was great it hits all my dimensions pretty much i think it's 48 millimeters 47 and a bit millimeters lug to lug uh it's 20 millimeters between the lug it's 13.45 millimeters thick i think or 7 13.7 millimeters thick um it's a completely different uh design and aesthetic to anything else i've got in a collection at the moment so at the moment without trying all the other ones on probably the glass original um, might be one that might change that um i'm not 100 percent sure another watch i did look at actually was um watch collection hang on a second uh, let me click on this the cq the glissute original uh cq go away wow big brother stuff All right here we go watch collection no oh this browser is so slow uh, here we go the cq so i did look at that but that again, I don't want a blue dial and I don't have a black and white variant. Um, it's black dial faux loom. So if they had a black dial faux um, white loom, that would probably be my next dive watch. I would I would save up for that. I would sell my um, Seiko. And if they had even a, uh, a black dial white loom variant of that, that would be my dive watch. Um, and then my collection would be Still small, but it would be a nice blue dial pilot's watch, uh, a generic sports watch, which I absolutely love. Obviously the CQ and then the Chrono Master. Um, and then I'll just have to build it out from there. So yeah, just some ramblings of someone who's into watches and just trying to figure out what the next steps are gonna be and my thoughts behind what I'm looking at and why. Um, I'm sure some of you will be able to uh, relate to this uh, and it also depends on what else comes out. Um, are they going to release new variants of other watches that I haven't considered? Um, I did look at other brands. I looked at Breguet, specifically Marine, but it's just a bit too busy for me and flipping expensive. I also looked at Blancpain and the 50 Fathoms, but again, out of my price range. Um, and I looked at a whole host of other things, but this is just a selection of some of the items, items, uh, watches and brands that I looked at. So if you've got any recommendations or anything you think might work, um, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll update again with some wrist shots uh, in the videos once I've actually been to London with some of those watches that I was looking at. And I maybe my thoughts would have changed, I'm not sure, but putting on that Zenith certainly caught me off guard um, in a really good way. So yeah, uh, until next video, cheers everyone.